Well, tonight, police say a 15-year-old is wanted for accidentally shooting and killing another teenager. Good evening. I'm Cherie Skipson. And I'm Devin Bartolotta. Police say the 15-year-old will be charged with one count of negligent homicide when he's found. The victim, Tyler Ellis, is the second Ward Easton student to lose his life in just a few weeks. Uh, Eleanor Tabone joining us now in the studio. And Eleanor, in both of these cases, police say that someone was mishandling a gun. That is correct, Devin and Sharice. A tragic loss. Another student shot and killed from Warren Easton in less than a month. Tyler Ellis's classmates are trying to come to terms with this new tragedy. A fake ass Australian accent is so she's exotic. Tyler. And it kind of like, it, well, it did. It stuck on me. And so he was the only person that I, I really let call me that. Warren Easton ninth grader Amaria Harris says she met Tyler Ellis at lunch one day and they just hit it off. It's still shocking and I'm still in the moment of processing the situation right now. But we're going to miss Tyler. Tyler was a young athlete who was a member of a football Damn, even team the young and on the honor roll. Less than 24 hours after he was shot, Amaria is trying to come to terms with his death. It's shocking because you never knew or know who's next. And the fact that he was just grieving about the loss of our friend Kennedy, her passing away. It oh, just... this is the same school with that little girl. That young girl was at a sleepover with a bunch of girls. And a sudden man in the next room shot a bullet through the wall and killed him. Was he in the next room or in the next apartment? I don't remember which. I think but he yeah, was I think next, this is that one. Yeah, so the next, I don't know, somebody, yeah, but he wasn't in that room. And was he, it, yeah. That was the black chick with the wig on, right? I, yeah, she's a young, I think she's like 15 or 17, yeah. 17 something like that, yeah. Wasn't yeah. she a math elite or something? Yeah. yeah he was going to go to college. She was crying right. about it. Yeah, this yeah. is the same school. Yeah, this is that same school in two weeks <laughs> later. And that's a smarty school, right? Looks like they got uniforms on, but um, it's New Orleans, man. So I don't know how smart it is. This shit is crazy, man. It's, it's devastating and shocking. At the end of January, Kennedy Belton, a freshman at Warren Easton High School, was attending a girl's sleepover when she was shot while lying in bed. Detectives say the suspect was playing with a gun that belonged to a friend in the next room, but it accidentally discharged. You never know somebody you're close to. That might be the last moments with them. Police say just before 9 p.m. they got the call about a shooting. The shooting that occurred here at the 3000 block of St. Rock Avenue, which killed 15-year-old Tyler Ellis, was an accidental shooting. Councilman Eugene Green is pleading with people to put the guns down. A young man who was a good student and also a athlete and his family is suffering right now. The young person who was already contributing so much to society is gone. Warren Eason. So if the good schools, if this is what happens at the good schools in the black estate. The public what? school kids ain't got a prayer. What happens at the schools where the kids can't read at a, like a 90% clip? <laughs> it's, fucking, it's, it's a big bowl of sad, man. That's why all you can do is laugh at it. Because, you know, ain't no, there's not enough tears in the world for this shit. These are the cats that, that can read that are getting right, killed. Exactly. All these kids can read at the grade level. Stunned. It's fucking, it is fucking maddening, man. It's got fucking, all them man. guns just shooting themselves off. It's fucking sad. They need yeah, to train these, the guns these, better, yeah, maybe. These kids aren't like in beefs where they're shooting their people. They're just getting shot because they're fucking in the stand and they're around fucking clumsy people and shit. They're guns and people that just don't care. It, there's no solutions, man. If there, if there's, if if there was ever proof that there's no solutions, I mean, come on, man. There's no solutions to this stuff. Ah, hear me out, bro. Ladies, don't get mad. Just don't let them vote forever, and it, it'll straighten itself out in about twenty years, man. They're too feminine out here. Everybody's like a fucking chick. Yeah, um, crying and begging and never taking accountability. I blame the tiny jeans. I don't know, man. I don't it's know white ladies. It's the glider ladies are killing everybody. 
They're killing yeah. dolphins. They're killing fucking turtles. They're killing everybody. <sighs> Several groups joined Vicksburg leaders at a town hall to address youth crime. They say last year they conducted around 1,800 youth court hearings. During the town hall, professionals discussed different strategies like mental health and outreach opportunities. It starts at home with the family. And from that family, we then build into the community. Depression in the state of Mississippi is 67% among 12 to 17 year olds. So what I've done is put together in the community a snapshot, not all the expertise, but a snapshot of the people that can give me the guidance to make this a reality. That was Mayor George Flags, who recently instituted a curfew for teenagers. It came after the shooting death of a 13-year-old, where the suspects were also teenagers. <laughs> that's a Louisiana too. I... That that's um that's Jackson. That's outside of Jackson, Mississippi, man. <laughs> oh man, um. Give me a city, man. Let's 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 do a couple of cities, man. Dayton, uh, Ohio. That's a cesspool. Dayton, that's a good one. Dayton. Roger. We covered it one time. It, it's 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 insane how many fucking hit and runs happen in Blackstone. Absolutely insane. It's like one thing leads to the other. Like the cops can't pull nobody over, so the hit and runs go up, and now you got dead old people. Exactly. A date man is facing two charges for shooting a person in a line for a food truck. The Montgomery County Grand Jury indicted Tyshawn Wilson on felonious assault of... Give me, a, give me an idea on Tyshawn Wilson, man. ...on felonious assault of a deadly weapon and physical harm. This stems from a shooting early on the morning of January 14th. Witnesses say around 2.30 a.m., Wilson walked up to the line of a food truck in Dayton's Oregon district. Wilson then cut in line, sparking an argument between he and other patrons. Police say Wilson then left the food truck and returned moments later with a handgun and shot one person in the leg. Wilson is currently being held at the Montgomery County Jail. I mean... <laughs> They're treating the food truck like it's a Popeye's. Damn. Do you think he meant to shoot him in the leg or he was just a bad shot? I, we don't even know if that's the person he meant to shoot. <laughs> There's some little Mexican bleeding out somewhere. I hope it wasn't big girl right here. Big girl, because I know when he cut in front of her, man, she was rightfully upset, man. She probably was like waiting in line. <laughs> she could taste it. You know how you can <laughs> taste the food. She's like, I'm next. And here he come. Just going to cut the line. Like, oh, my God. She made the ambulance wait for her order and shit. She's like, oh, yeah, man. Man. <laughs> bleeding out gravy. Yeah, damn. Damn, damn that's crazy. Um, yeah, man. Like, I mean, what can you do? Someone cuts in line. You're at the food truck. Someone comes and just cuts in line. from. In, in this case, I know nobody wants to be a punk. Nobody wants to be Ah, something. You know where I'm from. I'm from such and such. Yeah, we know where you're from. Yeah. But it's just best to just let him fucking have it. Yeah, you got to go one or the other, right? You either got to <laughs> like snatch him up, choke him up, gut stomp him, curb, put his teeth on the curb, or just like, go ahead, sir. Would you like me to buy it? You want a Coke? Right. Like, hey, do you I want mean, fries with that? Yeah. I mean, like, what do you do here, man? You're dealing with somebody. That will leave if you he objects to you objecting to he objects to you objecting to him cutting in front of you in line. <laughs> so then he go gets a gun and comes back and shoots someone. You can't compete with that, man. It's very hard for like a normal citizen that's not like a thug or a gangbanger. It's very hard to compete with that. So don't even try. And you're not even going to just against the sun, man. You're also going against the whole nation. Because if you fuck him up too bad, 
Yeah. Be signs they're gonna be marching against you. You're not gonna have a job no more. Exactly. It's just that they got us by the balls, man. They they literally have the whole world by the balls. Of January Burn your neighbor's 14. house down by accident. Say, around 2.30 a.m., Wilson walked up to the line of a food truck in Dayton's Oregon district. Wilson then cut in line, sparking an argument between he and other patrons. Police say Wilson then left the food truck and returned moments later with a handgun and shot one person in the leg. Wilson is currently being held at the Montgomery County Jail on a $250,000 bond. He will be arraigned on February 14th. At 2.30 in the morning, the bars out here close at 2, so everybody in the line was probably shit-faced. Oh, so was he. Yeah. I mean, shit. <laughs> I just don't know what you could do, man. It's very Maybe little... he shot that fat bitch in the leg to get some gravy for his fries. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's going to eat her. Oh, um... Yeah. Yeah, like it's to the point where if you see somebody, excuse me, if you see somebody like mad, hop in a car, it's just time to get in your yeah. back up the truck, everything, fold up that shit, and just drive away. Don't yeah, you? you just leave, man. You, yeah, you don't, you don't stick around. I, I'll be back as a Sunman will give you a Sunman. I'll be back, man. All right, all right, for free. Oh, okay, all right. Don't worry about it. You better not be here when I get back. Some man will tell you. So it's like, it's, it's no excuse. Um, Yeah, oh yeah, I wanted to show y'all something to cash at, man. Salute to you, bro. Um, Yeah, Pittsburgh is, Pittsburgh is, is, is fucking, whoo. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, students at Westinghouse Academy in Pittsburgh will be learning remotely that move coming after four students were shot outside the school today. And right now, police are looking for whoever opened fire. The victims are three boys and one girl. They're all expected to be okay. Jennifer Barresso is live at the school now with surveillance. Context clues. Four people shot. Everyone expected to be okay. I'm thinking funny. Video. You'll yeah, see only on KBKA. Shooting. Jen. That's right, Ken. Well, watching the surveillance video, you could hear nearly a dozen gunshots. Then the chaos unfolding. You could hear staff yelling and students running after Pittsburgh police say three 15-year-olds and a 17-year-old were shot. A dozen shots horrific. only hit four. That's a 33% average. That's pretty good for the sun community. Wounds. Katie, can you obtain yelling and students running after Pittsburgh police say three 15 year olds and a 17 year old were shot. It was horrific. It was tragic. Thank God that everybody had not life threatening wounds. KDK obtained this exclusive surveillance video of gunfire erupting outside of Westinghouse Academy in Pittsburgh's Homewood. You see school buses roll away and students running. A nearby resident who didn't want to be identified described the chaotic scene. It was so loud and it was just that rapid fire. And then I jump up and I look out the door and all I see is all the school buses scattering and kids running everywhere. What were you thinking? I, I just went into shock. School just let out when bullets went flying, hitting four Westinghouse Academy students, three teenage boys and one girl, with non-life-threatening injuries to their hands and other extremities, according to Zone 5 Pittsburgh Police. Three students taken to the hospital by ambulance, a fourth student driven to the hospital by a family member. All the students are stable, no life-threatening conditions. All the students are accounted for. And at this time, there's a diligent investigation to uh, determine the shooters. Sources tell me a witness told police they saw two men in ski masks on foot. They also say earlier in the day there was a fight inside the school between two students. Those students reportedly got sent home and suspended after dismissal. Uh oh. So the students got suspended, sent home. Never. Up the place. Ever. No, this is a fight earlier. Oh. Before the, before the shooting. There was a fight and two students got kicked out of school. Well, yeah. Went that way he had plenty of time to plan his ambush. Mm-hmm. 
that's when the gunfire erupted. We don't know if the two events are related. It's too early to tell if this was targeted or random, but we do take the uh, safety of our students very seriously, and we will have extra officer presence over the next uh, couple of weeks here. And Pittsburgh Police say at this point, no arrests have been made. Reporting live, Jennifer Barrasso, KDKA News. Jen, thanks. Do you guys want to know the demographics of this school? It's bad, yes. man. <laughs> On uh, great it? schools, it's 94% sun. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's 4% two or more races and 1% Hispanic or white. So it's 98% sun because those two more races, <laughs> those, those biracial kids identify as black. I promise you that. Dude, and it gets worse. Only 67% of students graduate. How many? 67%. Oh, that's pretty that's good. higher than I thought it was going to yeah, be. That's good. Man. That's high. Well, like, the, state ad, the, the state average for Pennsylvania is 86. Yeah, but like for a sun community like that, Detroit's less than 50%. So they're like yeah. Harvard. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Fuck. Yeah, like 57 is, is a huge number, man. Um, KDK following breaking news, a shooting outside Westinghouse Academy in Homewood. Police say four students were shot at dismissal time, three boys, one girl. All of them are expected to be okay. Police, as we speak, are still coming through evidence, trying to find any clues that would lead to possible suspects. Yeah, KDK's Royce Jones is live at the scene right now with reaction from folks who live near that school. Royce. Yeah, people who live near the school tell me that when they heard the shots go off in this direction, they were praying that no kids were harmed in this situation. I spoke with several of them. He's got a dress on underneath uh, that jacket. Home at the time of the shooting, some of them just sitting on their front porch, enjoying the weather, watching the day go by when these shots ring out. They say first they heard the shots and then quickly saw this block fill up with police. Nobody that I spoke with has any clue how any of this started, but they do know that they want this violence to stop. I was like, oh, not again, not again. Lord, please don't let anybody die. And I her first thought was, oh, Lord, not again. So there's obviously a lot of shootings around here, man. If you if you believe her. Wow. I believe her. Again, Lord, please don't let anybody die. And I, I just pray that we can unify better, not take things personally, to a point where we're ready to take a life. It's a unity problem, guys. Uh, these black people, they need to unify better, man. That'll solve it. 98%, that's pretty fucking united, ain't it? Right. It's fucking insane, man. These people are fucking, I mean, golly, Pittsburgh. Yeah, because we're all in this together. And then a few people also mentioned to me out here today that there have been uh, fights here in this area in recent weeks outside of the school. Uh, they say some of them involving uh, young kids. So they're really hoping that this incident here today isn't any sort of retaliation uh, from that. They did mention there was just one uh, here down the block, a couple blocks from where we're standing on Sunday. So reporting live outside Westinghouse, I'm Royce Jones, KDKA News. Yeah, so this Westinghouse thing, I think it's like a K through 12. And compared to Baltimore, you know, it's doing pretty good. The three through like eighth grades, they're 9% uh, of the students are reading at grade level. Up to ninth grade, that's good. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, these, yeah. Like I said, this is this is like a fucking private school, bro. This is like an academy. So if they graduate, if they make it all the way, they can at least read at a ninth grade level. Yeah. And also, like, this is, they're fudging the numbers here like they do with all the schools. Somebody said, like, they're, they're fudging the numbers. All the schools.